picked the wrong week to quit sniffing glue. Well, hello and welcome back, friends. You know, there's very little you can trust in this world. It seems to be getting more and more duplicitous by the day. But uh, you can take this to the bank when I tell you that this new project is going to be one of the most boring projects you'll have ever seen. And this is what we are going to be starting work on today. Yes, look. It's huge. That's the angle you're probably most familiar with. Um, but this is going to be a boring project. And the reason it's going to be a boring project is because I have to bore many, 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 many holes into it. Uh, yes, it's a lame joke, but it's the only one I've got. Um, and it's boring and enlightening at the same time because we are going to be enlightening the back part uh, of this and boring many holes. The painting, painting, come on, slap some white paint on this, put some shading in it, you're done. But it's all about the lighting. This kit is, uh, I would say, 80, 85, 90% of the, the appeal of this kit is going to be the lighting of it. If you've got white paint and gray paint, and well, white paint over primer, really, over gray primer will get you um, 90, will get you 100% of the way there. Anyway, this is, for those of you who don't know, this is the Ravel. Uh, reissue of the Svizvizvizv, the Russian version, because I'm not going to have no stinking commie uh, Imperial Star Destroyers on my collection, no siree. Uh, wait for the Ravel uh, version of it, but this is it. It still has the Ravel Russian sticker in the bottom that I've started peeling off, because like I said, get the stinking commies out. Um, there will be no Russian influence in, in my Star Destroyer build. But uh, I have started rounding up. Well, the, the, I did do a little bit of construction. I won't lie. It does not come like this. I did a little bit of construction. I put uh, these two support pieces in. These are internal braces. And I glued the, the this much of it is a top piece, is a separate piece. So I glued those together. And I started playing with the the conning tower and the housings and all of that kind of stuff uh, sanding up some bits and i've got this guy now the front i still have access to get into it because obviously here this being the face of your star destroyer that's the inside of it you are going to be wanting to bore a lot of holes in there to get that lit um so yeah i cut some parts off the sprues and put together some some um, some some sub assemblies that are not going to be lighting dependent, just to uh, see how well it goes together and all of that. And for the, for the most part, it's going together like a champ. But a lot of the places where you have to drill holes in for windows, you've got to drill, you've got to remove back wall behind them. So you're going to be losing a lot of support. Let's get down to the table and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, here you can see um, many of the parts laid out. And these top plates that are going to go on the tops of these decks are great. Now, I may whip up some sort of little texture map for them to give me some more detail. But that's not where the lighting comes from. All of the lighting comes out of the side, the side walls. And you have detail parts that go over top of these side walls where you're going to have to cut through them and through this interior to run your fiber optics. So that is going to be twice the fun in uh, drilling out. Like this is your typical side piece and that goes right up in there. And that means drilling through that and then nibbling away larger swaths of the interior so that um, you, can, you can fish the wire through, the fiber optic through. Now, I have not yet decided whether this will be a hung model or a model on a shelf. If it is a hung model, then obviously it demands that it be uh, battery operated so that you can turn the lights on and leave it hanging um, or turn them on and off by remote control, which would be a neat trick. I haven't done that yet. That might be a fun addition. 
um, and then make a way to uh, remove the battery. But if you choose to make it a stand model, then obviously you can run AC power to it and, and have no problems with it. So that problem I have not quite yet sussed out which way I'm going to do. But like I said, I have been lining up parts. I got some big old 10 mil LEDs for the three main engines and 5 mils for 10 mils for, for these three and 5 mils for those. And that's kind of obvious. That's kind of lighting 101. And um, then it's a question of burying bulbs inside to run source lights out to the fiber optics. So uh, that's the announcement of the grand project. Like I said, painting of it is not going to be that big of a challenge. The, uh, the boring work shall now commence. Well, hello and welcome back. It is Wednesday. I have to confess I did not get a lot of work done yesterday because I had a uh, uh, vinyl order come in and I needed to take care of that yesterday. I'm still finishing it up today, but believe me, it was a well-deserved break from the monotony of doing all of these holes. Like I said, it's boring work. But one thing that makes the boring work easier is uh, working on a light table. Now, pardon me, what, what's going to happen next? But yeah, uh, working on a light table is nice because you can see what your results are as you are cutting through them. And I am not making any pretense to try to keep these lined up on decks, you know, particular decks down, uh, because there's, that, that way lies madness. Um, also, um, the detail as nice as this is on this kit is nowhere near as complicated as the detail on the actual kits. And if you figure the actual kits, however big they were, six, seven feet long, and they were using fiber optics, um, chances are these fiber optics are still going to be way out of scale. So uh, I'm just trying to get vindications of decks and windows and things like that. So um, you can see I'm just making a nice little pattern so that when it's put on the ship, it will look interesting. Uh, I noticed something, speaking of interesting, I didn't, let me turn this off. Uh, speaking of interesting, I did notice something on the trees for this kit that I thought was strange. Usually, if you're looking at a tree, you know, a model tree, uh, a sprue, that uh, all of the fronts are on one side and all of the backs of the parts are on the other side. It's kind of, kind of standard that way. Everything that's flat is on the back and the raised bits are on the front. And what's interesting is this kit splits that up a little bit. See? Here is the obvious front of this part and the front of that part, but there's the back of this part. And there's, you know, if you were going to say, okay, there's all the detail on the front, then you're looking at the backs of these two. It's very strange that they uh, divvied it up that way, that they put some of the fronts. I guess it has to make more sense for their molding, but it's odd nonetheless. And here's the bridge, uh, front of the bridge. Uh, I went ahead and glued up the front and bottom. I know there are no holes here for lighting. Uh, just to give this some stability while I was working on it, because I can kind of put it in a brace like that and work up and down. Um, it has nowhere near the level of detail that the actual uh, bridge conning tower front has. Uh, I did want to check to see whether or not these guys here were open or not and apparently they are not these these six big what could be windows are are not open so uh, uh, I noticed that they are thinner I'm going to turn the light on again hold on the plastic is thinner behind those so it would be a natural for you know some spill light to come through but they don't get opened up but here you can see uh, light shining through and um, I got to tell you, at some point I need to decide whether I'm just going to put a light up in there and let the light shine out of the holes or whether I'm actually going to run fiber optics. So I'll have to put all the lights, uh, put all the holes in, cover it up, stick a bulb in there and see what the results are versus running uh, fiber optics out of all of those. Like I say, we'll see, then we'll know. Not having seen, we can't know. But uh, I'm going to go in and finish poking some holes in these sides and continue this boring work. 
Okay, so uh, here I was working on the Star Destroyer boring holes in there and frankly going a slight bit mad when mail call came and in the mail was something eminently much more exciting and uh, uh, interesting to build. So I think I'm going to pause on the, put a pause on the uh, Star Destroyer and put these together real quick because I've had an earnest plea uh, and they're not from a man named Ernest, but from a man named Brian, who's a good friend of mine. And he said, he called me up the other day and said, Lou, I got this U-Wing uh, TIE Striker kit, but I want masks for the wings. Can you do that? And I said, well, you know, Brian, I can do it, but I don't have a copy of the kit. So uh, I jumped online to Cult TV Man and a uh, quick email to Steve say, do you have one of these on hand? And he said, yes. I said, please send it to me. And uh, he did, and I got it today. And those are the parts right there that's, that I think Brian wants to have masked. So I'm going to pull this out, put this bad boy together, and see how quick I can whip up a set of masks for this. And I think I also want to do something for the stripes on the uh, U-Wing as well. Because, you know, hey, you may not want to make those blue. You may want to make those a different color. So uh, let's put these kits together and see what they're all about. Okay, literally that was about five minutes. Five minutes time since I started, it takes that long to finish. The thing about these little Bandai kits, they ain't much to them. They look pretty on the shelf though. Um, and because it's a Bandai kit, I know I can take it all back apart. So what I'm going to do now, uh, after I do the U-Wing, which it went up so quickly, is take this apart and mask it off and uh, repaint it. Luckily, I do not have to try to do anything with those windows because it's a cast solid part. Um, I may try to, well, I may try to mask that so that I can paint that frame. We'll see. At least we don't have to worry about it being a clear part is what I'm, what I'm trying to say. Okay, there you go. That's a quick uh, couple of hours. I did, wasn't really, you know, timing myself with a stopwatch or anything, but uh, these went together pretty quick. They uh, could use a little bit of paint. The decals, of course, uh, I might decide which ones I'm going to use, which ones I'm not. But those big blue stripes are certainly something that can be painted. So uh, why not make masks for those in case you don't want to make them blue. And uh, these guys are going to be easy enough to mask. So uh, now that we've got this much done, let's uh, talk about some paint. Well, it is Thursday and welcome to Rabbit Hole Theater. Uh, this is what happens when, or maybe I should call it stream of conscious uh, modeling. This is what happens when I get diverted. Oh, excuse me. When I get, this is what happens when I get diverted. Um, working on masks for this little uh, TIE fighter from uh, Rogue One. And um, getting that ready to paint and getting this. Now, here is the entirety of this TIE fighter. This is it. To paint that, which I want, want to do this blue-gray, um, actually more blue than gray, but the, the blue-gray color that TIE Fighters are, um, I need to mix up a color of paint for that. It's not really something you can get out of the jar. Light gray is close. I need to add some blue to it. Well, the truth is, I sneeze more paint than this takes to paint. So... Uh, mixing up that tiny fraction of blue paint just to paint this tiny tiny model um, didn't make a lot of sense to me so i'm thinking okay i need to mix up some tie fighter blue do i have any other tie fighters that i need to be painting at the same time yes i do have this i have this 172nd scale tie fighter that uh has been sitting in the closet in the stash that i need to pull out and paint at the same time but I didn't have any masks for it either. So, as a result, I am working on, this is this 172nd TIE Fighter. I'm going to leave these areas black, and I am trying to make masks to protect these areas so that I can paint the rest of the bits blue. Now, it's true. I could spray the, spray the sprues. I could just spray the, the blue paint on this and be done with it and then put it together but you know you're always going to need to patch something or touch something up so uh we're going to go backwards yet again make masks for these and put this model together so that i can paint all of the uh, tie fighter blue at one time 
This is what happens when I get off track. Pardon the glare, but I've shifted gears a little bit. It's uh, Thursday, by the way. And I've gone back to drilling holes in the walls for the Star Destroyer. And the reason I'm doing this is because it's something mindless that I can sit and actually do while I've got a movie on. I can take a little, uh, take the, the uh, drill and a, uh, let me turn this light off. I can take a drill and a piece of wood and just sit out in the living room and, and chop holes in this and kind of zone out while I'm doing it. So that's what I'm going to do for a while. And then maybe I'll come back to doing some painting in here. Well, good morning. It's Friday, and my first goal for today, my first mission, my holy task, is to clean this mess up and turn it into a couple of TIE Fighters, and maybe even a U-Wing if I have time, uh, and then maybe get back on the Star Destroyer. But uh, I'm just working up some masks here. I did masks for the uh, engine, of course, and for the uh, canopy, and the little top. I have to mask that on the inside as well, since... It needs to be painted on the inside, but that's for the lid, so to speak. And even tinier, tinier masks for the 144 scale. Let me see if I can find the tiny, tiny window, front window for there. Is this it? Is this it? No. Uh, the tiny, tiny, oh, good Lord, don't let me lose pieces. It's here somewhere. That tiny mask for the front of the even smaller let me get these tanks out of the way and these U-wing parts is that a Bobby U-wing or JR U-wing I don't know uh, can't be the first person to have made that joke I am trying to find the tiny window cockpit window for the tiny 170 there, there's the mask for the back but there's a piece there that has oh here it is duh Tiny, tiny window masks. I painted those windows black, and now I'm going to paint the gray framework around them and then go with the blue-gray that's uh, going to be the typical color of the uh, uh, TIE Fighters. And now I need to mask these panels that I painted yesterday and uh, get the framework ready to paint. Well, very well. It seems I finally have all of the masking done. I've got the big wings masked off, so I'm going to start spraying the bluish gray um, I'm going to go ahead and hit the outsides of these two parts knowing that I still have to put the cockpit together and fit it together so there may be some touch up down the line but I'm eager to get some bluish gray paint on some stuff okay I don't know how well the uh, the blue tint is being picked up uh, in the video but it is very uh, very uh, identifiable here and uh, you can see uh, all of these pieces have been painted, and I am uh, setting them aside to dry right now. And while we uh, let the uh, paint dry on the TIE Fighters, we get back to the Swiss cheesification of the Star Destroyer. Yes, that's what I'm calling it. It's a new official term. Add it to your lexicon. It is the Swiss, Swiss cheesification. Um, now, I went through a lot of the uh, panels, or all the exterior panels, uh, last night and into this morning. Uh, getting the uh, windows chopped out, but that's only one part of it because After you've got all of those windows chopped out you end up slapping it up against the solid wall Like that and all of a sudden you've got to redrill all of those holes. Well, you're not going to redrill them all individually That would be stupid um, So what you're going to do is cut a big chunk out of that the problem with that is if you end up if you cut so much of it out that you are compromising the integrity of the rest of the part. So um, what I'm going to be doing probably in the next bit or so is mapping out how much of the big chunks need to be cut and then putting the roof panels on because you put the roof panels on that uh, puts, puts the structural reinforcement back in and all of a sudden you can afford to cut out more of the side walls uh, without compromising the parts too much. So uh, that's the next stage is to do all of the side wall cutouts all over the ship where you've got the skin panels going on. Okay, in the darkened room not so far away I am seeing how this looks. 
Yes, there's a massive amount of bulbs. Oh yes, it's blinding, blinding out the camera. That's what it's supposed to do. And I gotta tell you, while I was putting those in, it put a uh, hurting on my eyeballs too. I'm still seeing little after images of all of these LEDs. But, uh, go into the light. I think that's gonna work quite nicely. Now what I wanna do now is uh, get some of that epoxy putty and putty those in place and, and because it's quicker to set up I wanted to uh, uh, put one in uh, kind of hold it in the right place get it in the center of the hole and all that and then let it set up so I'm gonna go do that now and I'll have something showy to show for the end of the day Get back on the TIE Fighters now I'm bouncing back and forth and uh, I've got the the blues that bluish gray has had a chance to dry I've started reassembling the ball, getting that all put together, and I want to hit that with a coat of satin so that I can do some line work on those panels. But that's all back together. And now I'm going to uh, remove the masks from these wings for the little guy. Now that is one snazzy set of wings, if I do say so myself. Uh, one last thing to do, and that's to pop them onto here, glue down that top part, and uh, then get it ready for some satin coating. And one last look at this guy with all the little buggery masks removed. And that looks good. Now I'm going to give this guy a uh, satin coat before I paint the details and try to uh, put a wash over some of the uh, panel lines. And here are the big 70, 170 second scale TIE Fighter wings. All unmasked and ready for a uh, similar flat coat or a semi-gloss coat. I'm going to do them separately from the body so that I can get in around things a little easier and then once I have done the wash on it then I'll put them together at the final bit. But uh, now we're ready to take them and spray them. And here's a shot with all the bells in place. Now they're not glued down but they are uh, in place in position so that I can check their alignment make sure the bulbs are all pointing straight out and all that kind of good stuff um, yes there's lots of lens flare yes there's lots of glare because of the bulbs it's starting to look like a Star Destroyer though and we're back on the work table and I have condensed all of these wires down to two leads to a, a power source and there you go there's the the bright boys themselves and that's where this is going to sit for the weekend. As a module, it's uh, pretty well done. I probably will paint it up uh, as one unit and set it aside and get it ready to go in to the rest of the ship. Give you one last look. Boom. Depending on where you are sitting, that thing will blind you. Here is the uh, tie window with the masks taken off. Nice and clean and sharp. Pop it in place and this little boy will be done. And to end this week on a good note, here is one finished TIE Fighter with the uh, movable wing flaps. The 144 scale TIE. Vicious little thing. Fun build. Five minute build, five minutes, to, you know, 20 minutes to paint, but I mean, come on. TIE Fighters are not complicated beasts. That's the view you don't want to see in your rear view mirror. But the good flat coat on everything but the windows. You can just barely see in there, but there's a pilot in there. Don't know exactly why they put that window in the back of the cockpit if they're not going to have it go out the back wall. But hey, and uh, just as in the movies, this these are blue-gray, but they show up on film as, as gray. It was one of those things that, uh, as a kid, I always thought TIE Fighters were either off-white or gray. And one of the big revelations was first seeing that dark blue color on them. So uh, these are both blue but they but they uh are bluish gray but they photograph as gray and of course on the table i did not quite finish the uh u-wing i'm going to call him bobby um 
I'll get to that next week. Maybe over the weekend I'll finish it up. But I want to do some aging and some weathering and painting on that. And uh, let me show you the other thing I got done this week. And of course the other thing I got done this week was getting all the lights in there. And let me turn on the table, sorry. But getting all of the holes. Now we know how many holes it takes to fill the Albert Hall. But yeah, you can see all of the window holes cut in. All of these parts that are on the sprues. And if you don't think that uh, stringing all of those fiber optics is going to be a joy, oh boy. Hopefully you can see. And that's just some of them. I've got like four trees of this stuff. Things like that. Things like this. So I got a lot of holes drilled this week. And that's going to do it for this week. Uh, as you can see, maybe by behind me, it's getting darker at night. We had our time change this week. Boy, that took me a couple of, took me a while to get used to that. But it's uh, already dark out, so I don't have to worry about the sun shining in that back window right after I closed up the uh, curtains. Um, so, got a couple little things done this week. Got the tiny TIE fighter and the... Uh, both the 172nd and one, 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 one 144th scale TIE Fighters done this week. And that was kind of to make up for the fact that Star Destroyer, it was a lot of boring, retedious, re tedious. Yes, that's my new word for the week, retedious. Um, so much, so tedious that it happens again. Um, but getting all those little holes drilled in, and that is nobody's, uh, nobody's uh, idea of a good time. But it's done. And now it's time to start carving out the hunks of the hull that these walls have to go up against. And I will, that's what we'll be doing next week. Um, I'm thinking that what I want to do is uh, go ahead and do as much of the construction as I can. Do as much of the painting as I can. And then start feeding through the fiber optics from the outside in. Uh, blooming the outside edge and, and using that to stop the fiber optic from falling through. Um, what that's going to do is paint's going to close up those holes just a little bit. And that'll make the fiber optics fit a little bit more snugly, I'm hoping. And uh, then once the fiber optics are in and gathered and lit, then we're mostly done. I won't have to do a lot of painting on top of them, which means I won't have to worry about snipping the edges or um, sanding off the, the bulbs. So, uh, until we get back to that next week, uh, be good. Be good to each other. Get ready for the family because... The holidays are coming, and we will see you here next week.